So let's put the first screen up here this morning here. I want to preach to you uh, a, a word this morning that will leave you encouraged. I've, uh, I've got a, a certain, certain agenda this morning that I want to accomplish according to how God is leading our service this morning here. But the verse that comes to me here as we see each and every one of us impacted by the things that are going on in the world is the, the fear factor. And I firmly hold to this scripture that I'll read to you from 1 John. And if you want to open up your Bibles, open up your Bible apps, whatever you've got there, there's a couple things I'll read to you here this morning. I'm going to keep it short. That's my promise to you here this morning because this day is also, as you've heard, has been designated as a national day of prayer. And we're going to comply with working as a house of prayer to pray here in this place. So a certain part of our service this morning is we're going to pray. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see things happen. We're going to see that hedge, that protection remain around each and every one of us and every one that we touch and come into contact with. And that is going to happen here today. So for this morning, and we'll, we'll have some worship here at the end uh, again here, but turn with me because I'm just going to preach exhortation to you this morning. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, we read these words. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. Now that's a whole other message right there. We can go into that yet another time. But as He is, as Jesus Christ is, as He is in all glory, in all power, in all wisdom, in all provision, in all protection, as He is in heaven, so are we in this world here. Now that gives us not a title of exclusivity, right? It does not give us a, ha look at me, look how great that I'm proclaimed to be. Absolutely not. Because if you're truly going to be a leader, if you're truly going to be a servant of Jesus Christ, then you are washing the feet of everyone around you. You are always the one that is putting and preferring yourself, uh, others in front of you. You are not thinking of yourself. But think of that verse and keep that in your heart because as He is, so are we. That's a promise, amen? That is a promise to you and me as a Christian that has been saved, that has been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, that as He is, we are the same in this world. Read the next verse with me. Verse 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears, he that feareth, is not made perfect in love. If we have, if we proclaim, if you and I are declaring that we have the love of Christ in our hearts, then there should not be any fear in our life at all, period, end of the statement, okay? Because there is nothing about fear in love. If our Father, as we pray, and as we've been instructed to pray, as we understand who our Father is, and that He is a good, good God, there is no way, no way, I'm declaring and I'm telling you, there's no way 
that our God is going to put a sickness upon you to test you. No way is that going to happen because our Father, He knows and He understands our needs. He loved us so much that He gave His only Son for us so that we could have life. Not confusion, not fear, not discontentment, not hopelessness. He gave us life. Amen? So there is no fear in love. Go to the next screen for me, please. Here's what I think about the coronavirus. C-O-V-I-D-19, I guess, is the legal name of it, right? Well, here's what it stands for. Christ over viruses and infectious diseases. And the 19 comes from Joshua 1, verse 9. And it says, read it with me, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen? God's Word is true. I am thankful. I am so happy that I can go to His Word, that I can open up His Word and say, God, I thank You that every word that is written was inspired by the Holy One of Israel. Amen? That it can give us that same inspiration, that same encouragement, that same hope, that same confidence. Even as we heard that anything that we ask, anything that we pray, He hears us and He will answer. God is so good. He is so good. And I had a whole nother message that I honestly think I'm going to wait to bring next week. So if we'll go to the Next screen there, uh, or not next screen, uh, the Psalm 91. Again, we know, we've heard, we even two weeks ago, I brought it out in a message. Psalm 91. I want you to today go with me to that psalm. And today, I want you, as we read together, I want you to join in faith with each other, as a house, as a, a church, as believers that are one body, one with another. I want us to read that psalm this morning with a whole new understanding. Amen? I want us to read every word that's in that psalm and write yourself into it. Because again, I know this, I'll declare it, I will say it, it is true, every word that is written in that Bible was meant for you and for me, so that we could take a day like today, where we have taken time to gather together, to be inspired, to be encouraged, to be enriched. And that Psalm 91, again, don't let it just be a commonplace, oh, I know that Psalm. Do you really, really know it? Do you really believe what you really believe? Yes? Then let's read it together. Because this is what we are going to do before we go to the next thing here. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, and again, let's put this in first person. I, myself, me, you, let's read this. I will say of the Lord... He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, not maybe, not possibly, not hopefully, 
Surely, surely, for sure, absolutely, guaranteed, never, never, ever fail. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the follow, follower. He will deliver me from the snare, anything at all from the fowler, someone, something that tries to trip us up. And, what's it say? From the noisome pestilence. This COVID is a noisome pestilence. It's what it is. Noisome in that you hear about it. There's never been a time in our culture, in our, in our history, that we have seen stuff grow so quickly. How? Why? My opinion? Fear. Fear is what makes that go. Social media doesn't help that, I know. Because it just sits and propagates fear. Now, does that mean that I'm advocating that that we are to be unwise? Absolutely not. Does that mean that we are going to do something that is foolish? Absolutely not. But I know my God. I know that relationship that Psalm 91 talks about in understanding who you are in God, in Jesus Christ, is where it all starts. That's why we can declare that verse 3 and say, Surely my God will deliver me from that hand of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. From any virus whatsoever, it is one I am free. Amen? He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth, what we know right here, what we can stand upon is the truth. And it is solid. We can hope and we can know that it cannot fail. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. This pestilence is a demonic spirit. We understand this. And what do we do? We hold to His Word. We take our time and we go back to the Word and we ground ourselves upon it saying, God, Your Word promises and I'm going to hold to it. Keep reading it. It gets a whole lot better. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I declare that. I declare that. Anytime that I happen to hear a news report of another case or another thing or another situation, I declare out loud, out of my mouth, I declare it. I say, and it shall not come near my house. It shall not come near this body. I am a temple of the living God. Amen. Those are the words that need to be coming out of your mouth. They need to be expressed. If they're in your heart, that's where the abundance of the mouth is going to speak. Let God's Word be found true. Declare it. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9. Because. I always love God's Word. Because it will always give us that parameter of why. How could this happen? How could this be? What makes you so special? What makes you think that you're uh, immune from any virus? Verse 9 tells me, Because I've made the Lord my God, my habitation. 
Verse 9 says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. It will not come near me. It will not, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Are you able to write yourself in to God's Word? Do you believe God's Word? Yes or no? Then you declare it. You take it and you start declaring it with your mouth and so that you understand from your heart, my God is for me. He is over me. He is like a hedge that protects me. The beginning verse in that Psalm 91 says, He that abides in the secret place of the Most High. What is that secret place? It's simply that relationship that you have, that you understand, that you have in your heart with your Maker, with the One that created you. Amen? It will not come near you at all. For He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread. That's talking about you and me. It's not just some happy pie in the sky kind of a thought. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. And again, Here's that parameter. Because. How could this be? How could we have authority? How could we even think that this mortal body could do anything? Because, it says in God's Word, because He has set His love upon me, therefore will I deliver Him. I will set him on high because because finish it for me he's known my name can you say that this morning you need to be in that place if you want that comfort if you want that peace if you want to be living without fear you have to know his name And if you've never done that, we'll give you an opportunity at the end of this service to do just that. Most everybody in here, as I look across, has acknowledged Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And you are blessed because you can take His Word. You can take His Word and you can stand on it and you can write yourself into it every time. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. Is that good news? Whether I just step out of bed in the morning before I've even had my coffee, I can call upon him. I can talk to him. I can say, good morning, Lord. What a beautiful day. Thanks, for the opportunity to have one more day, to have a day that your mercies have been renewed all over me again, again, your faithfulness, I will declare. He shall call upon me, I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We serve a good, good God. Amen? Amazing God. A God that loves us. A God that even beyond all of that, He understands us. He understands our daily life. He understands that 
when we hear and we have all of these things coming across us in the news and back and forth and all of the closings and this and that. He understands, brethren, what you need. And He's there to help you. He's there to encourage you. He's there to say, just call upon me. Just go to my word. Just open up my word. I'm here. You want to hear the voice of the Lord? I've said this before. Just open up his word. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking loud. And in a time of trouble, in a time of, of, of much turmoil, noisome pestilence, brethren, this isn't going to be the last time this comes across this nation. And we can have every kind of theory as to why, why is this happening and all of that. But I will declare again to you, God is faithful. And this morning, if we'll put up the next screen here, we're going to take advantage of coming together as believers as a house of prayer because we can read every promise in God's Word and we can say amen to it. But there's something else that happens when we come together and pray. If we want to turn here, just one more scripture I want to share here. Again, it's a common one. Second Chronicles 7. You know where I'm going. Second Chronicles 7, verses 14 through 16. Actually, we'll start up a little bit uh, further in uh, verse 12. Solomon said these words. Second Chronicles 7. He had just finished the house of the Lord, building the house of the Lord. He had just finished doing sacrifices. In fact, it says that he did 1,000 sacrifices, I believe it said. He offered a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. I mean, beyond what our minds can even think about. But God was pleased because he was being put first in that place in that time and I believe that as a people first and foremost as a house of God we can come before the Lord offering the sacrifices of our lives doesn't the word say in Romans chapter 12 brethren I beseech you I beg of you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice which is acceptable. It's your reasonable service to God Almighty so that you would be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you would understand what that perfect and good and perfect will of God is. These sacrifices can be made right here, right now, this morning as we gather together and yes, I do believe that if there are others that will join us across this nation as it has been declared, I'm not talking politics. I'm not saying look at who declared or made this a national day of prayer. That makes no difference whatsoever. It doesn't matter if you like the president that's in office right now or if you don't care for him. It makes no difference. But when God has called for prayer, I believe we need to answer it. I, need, I believe that we will be honored by His favor if we simply humble ourselves. And that's what Second Chronicles 7 says. Verse 12, it says, The Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place this place, this 
house, this house, this dwelling, the secret place. You are that secret place in God, that abiding in Him. God said, I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Who's speaking to Solomon? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is speaking to Solomon and saying, I have found favor upon you and in, the, in this place. And he said, if there is something like a noisome pestilence that comes in, something that you need, if my people will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then, Jesus Christ, our intercessor, said, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. That's God's word. We can take that right now, this time. And I'm going to ask each and every one of you in whatever way that you want to pray. And I'm going to ask the worship team to come up in a little bit, not right away, but give us some time together. And I'm going to ask you to do whatever you feel to do right now in this house to pray. To pray for this country. To pray for the, the, the virus and the things that are going on right now to be killed. To be done with. I want you all to pray in any way that you want. If you're more comfortable just sitting in your chair, that's fine. If you want to come to kneel and pray, that's fine. If you want to walk around and declare out loud God's Word, His faithfulness, that's fine. If you want to get uncomfortable and do something you've never done before, that's your choice. But I want us, each and every one, in whatever way we can, to gather together right now for some dedicated time of prayer. And I don't want it to be silent. I want our voices to go up. I want God to hear. I want Him to see that there is a sincerity, that there is a humbleness, that there is a turning that we are willing to do from anything at all to pray, to pray, to pray, to believe with one another. You've got an opportunity to stand with one another. You've got a chance right now to pray. And let your voice be heard. God Almighty, You are faithful. God Almighty, You are true. You are our provider. You are our way maker, our healer. You are all in all. I thank You, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity to pray, to pray, to pray. Heal our land. Heal, heal. Let there be a healing, healing in this place. Protection. Hallelujah. A little bit of soft music as it comes here. Pray. Take this time. Pray. We'll go into some worship as we pray some more here. Our time right now is to pray. Let God hear your voice. Yes, my Lord, your word is true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
You are faithful, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. I believe as we pray right here in this place that there's healings that are going to be manifested. <laughs> God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. Pray. 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 Oh, God, hear our prayer. 